and it confirms the worst. Somehow Palpatine returned. Now that, that is not Star Wars. But this, well, this just could be. It's no surprise that after the completion of the Star Wars sequel trilogy that Disney managed to run into the ground that the engagement, the reach, the intrigue, and honestly the fandom as a whole would start to fizzle out as well. In one of the most deliberate ways on playing on a fandom's expectations and subverting the integrity of the movie, the characters, and everything that Star Wars meant for basically half a century, it feels as if the people running things over there at Disney and maybe even the almighty Kathleen Kennedy herself are starting to run into the problems that they themselves created all those years ago when they made me sit down and watch this. What the fuck? Now don't get me wrong, I'm not somebody who's going to come out here and say that everything Disney Star Wars has done has been a complete failure. The Mandalorian Season 1 was a great and unique story with a character that we've never seen before, and by the end of the show was able to make him into a character that everybody could relate to. Oh yeah, and Baby Yoda. And Season 2 continued to ride the high wave of Season 1, raising the stakes of the characters, building on the character development of the old, and introducing new and familiar characters to the show, as well as still being the imaginative space world of Star Wars that we all know. The Book of Boba Fett was a dry and slow-paced show when it was actually the Boba Fett show, and it's really sad watching a slow and aging actor not being able to play out the scenes from the show that we actually wanted from a true Boba Fett show becoming a boring and sleep husk of a shell from the state that we were used to seeing the character. And I don't know if it was the right decision, but the decision to make that back half of the show, basically the Mandalorian 2.5, really saved the show for me. Baby Yoda, Ahsoka, and Luke Skywalker in their time after the destruction of the Empire and the rise of the First Order is simply just more interesting to me, and Din Djarin is basically the Boba Fett character that we've always wanted to see. And honestly, I'm just fine with that. And when it comes to the rest of the Disney Star Wars films, well, Rogue One was a hard movie to really mess up. A film that was made solely to fix a plot hole and was still left from the original trilogy, filled with characters that we knew weren't going to make it by the end of the movie, and stakes that were already set from the previous films. And let's be honest, once people got their eyes on that post credit Darth Vader scene, well, the studio knew they were making their money back. My point is, is that there is actually a Disney Star Wars movie out there that did happen to be a fun and simple Star Wars movie that I did happen to enjoy. It just wasn't any of the films that they wanted it to be. Solo A Star Wars Story is an origin film of one of the most iconic characters in the universe of Star Wars, if not the history of cinema itself. An arrogant and cocky intergalactic smuggler whose only true bonds that were put on display were for his long-term partner, co-pilot, and best friend Chewbacca, and for his ship, the Millennium Falcon turned into one of the most prominent and respected figures in all of the Rebel Alliance, being swayed to the cause after teaming up with Luke Skywalker and Leia Organa, becoming a hero, and if we're being honest, one of the main reasons that they were able to destroy not only the first, but both Death Stars. Have you not? What? Yeah and in the climate that we live in now, with the lack of creativity and the fiending of nostalgia bait from Hollywood, Han Solo was the perfect character to receive an origin story, with vague but interesting references to his previous life, as well as fan-made questions that people would love to see the answers to, like, how did Han Solo and Chewbacca meet? And for lack of popular belief, I actually think they managed to do a good job with what they did. The movie kicks off with a young Han, before he was a pilot, before he was a smuggler, and shipped before he even had a last name on the planet of Corellia with his girlfriend Kira. And after an escape plan gone wrong, the two find themselves separated, with Han joining the Empire to learn how to become a pilot in order to come through on the promise to come back and save her. Fast forward a couple of years later, Han finds himself joining up with a galactic group of smugglers led by Woody Harrelson, I mean Tobias Beckett, in order to steal a rare mineral called Coaxium for the crime lord Dryden Voss, the leader of one of the most powerful crime syndicates in the universe, Crimson Dawn. Long story short, after the mission goes wrong, Han and the crew find themselves indebted to Boss and are sent on a daring mission to travel to the mining planet of Kessel in order to make up for the lost coaxium that they owe to Dryden Boss, as well as trying to make it out with their lives not only from the threat from Dryden Boss, but from the cargo that they're carrying, the people that they're trying to steal it from, as well as a group of marauders known as Emphis Nest. And there you go, that's basically the plot of the movie. 
now only coming out after six months later after The Last Jedi, one of the most divisive movies in all of cinema, I could understand why at the time that the love and faith of this franchise was starting to hit record low, and why those feelings would translate into how people were watching this movie back then. I know that's what happened to me, but after rewatching, this is honestly the perfect Star Wars movie blockbuster that Disney always wanted to make. This movie was fun and simple, but also was very focused on what it was trying to achieve. Alden Ehrenreich, the actor playing Han Solo, did his best to impersonate and capture the charisma and personality of one of the most iconic characters in history and throughout film. And I thought that he was doing a great job of portraying to me a man that would do anything for his convictions, but as well as putting his life on the line for the people that he cares about and the goals that he's trying to achieve. He was put in an impossible task where every shortcoming was going to be magnified, only in the sense that having a pre-established knowing of the character and who he was and having to fill in the blanks of what came before the man that we know. But I had very few complaints while watching the man try to display his craft. The story was a straightforward narrative, unlike most Star Wars films that have subplots and even other main storylines going on throughout the film that might be hard for some of the casual viewers to follow. And the set pieces were split out enough throughout the film that you could actually capture scenes of real dialogue with character building, as well as getting into the boom boom pow pow that the casual viewer goes to see a Star Wars movie for. I've never really been a fan of Amelia Clark's acting, even in her Game of Thrones career before the disastrous seasons of 7 and 8, but she does her job fairly well here as the love interest and the motivation setter for the plot and the character of Han. Nothing is really asked too much of her, and for the scenes that she's needed to display emotions, she does her best job of bouncing off the more established actors like Woody Harrelson and Paul Bettany Stryden Voss, who I felt as if was one of the most wasted characters in the movie given the acting chops of the character that they cast to play the guy. Leading me into saying that not everything about this film is all good, and there could be things that could be glossed over as a nitpick, but we still have our standard helping of THE MESSAGE with the droid character L3, why do they always do this to the droids? When introduced to the character of Lando, you're also sadly introduced to his co-pilot and, um, maybe lover L3? A sentient droid with free will, and let me tell you, she definitely lets you know. No! Unacceptable! Stop exploiting droids! If she doesn't want to fly, I'll be your co-pilot. No, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. It's okay. She's definitely going. Oh, why? Because you're my organic overlord? <laughs> so funny. She's a minor character that doesn't really affect the overwhelming narrative or the plot, but is kind of the character that throws off the chemistry and the rhythm of scenes, thrown in for comic relief because we happen to kill off the character that that trope was made for earlier in the film, and her dialogue was just a choppy and unnecessary add to the script as well as some casual conveniences thrown in that the writers simply just didn't want to come up with an answer for or just simply didn't care. Like Han Solo knowing how to speak Wookiee without any prior setup of how he even knows that and how he can have the language for basically an extinct race of aliens far from his home world with the rest being captured and enslaved by the Empire as workers for their upcoming plans of the Death Star and not soldiers for the front lines like Han. But I would say personally, it didn't take away from the movie as a whole for me. Was it annoying? Yes. But it was a safe and classic origin story of a pre-established character that didn't really change or try to rewrite the character to fit into the safe places of today's society. And it's a film that I wouldn't mind watching again, especially by most of the trash that's coming out now. If someone asked me to wrap this movie up in one sentence, I would say Solo was a good blockbuster Star Wars film that was honestly an unfair failure of Disney Star Wars. But what do you think? Besides Rogue One, I feel as if this was the second best Disney Star Wars movie, but money-wise, it's the worst. Hating on Star Wars is pretty easy, and I do it myself a lot, and that's why I haven't really made videos regarding those films, and decided to watch this, and I was pleasantly surprised. Make sure you like the video and go check out some of my other videos because I might have already talked about your favorite movie or TV show, and I'm always down for conversations about entertainment. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today, so bye.